Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. St. James man charged for triple murder. The St. James police have charged 28-year-old Wesley Reed, otherwise called O'Shane, in connection with a triple murder in Roehampton, St. James on June 2nd. Reed was charged with three counts of murder, possession of a prohibited weapon, and using a firearm to commit a felony. The charges relate to the death of 38-year-old Conrad Lawrence, otherwise called Beanie, a warehouse attendant, 38-year-old Chevron Guard, otherwise called King Kong, and King Terry, a tailor, and 56-year-old Carlos de Morris, otherwise called Shuttle, a taxi operator, all of Rohampton, St. James. The Montego Bay police say about 9.20 p.m., residents reported heard explosions and alerted them. Upon their arrival, Gordon and Lawrence were seen lying beside a shop with chop wounds to their heads, and Morris was seen close by with gunshot wounds. All three men were taken to hospital where they were pronounced dead. An investigation was launched and Reed was arrested. He was charged on Saturday after being questioned in the presence of his attorney. Teenager charged for alleged possession of gun and ammunition. A 16-year-old boy has been charged with several offenses following the seizure of a firearm at his home on Walker's Avenue in Gregory Park, Portmore on August 16. The police say about midday, Lawmen were on an operation in the area when a premises that was occupied by the teen was searched. During a search, a .38 revolver containing 1.381 of ammunition was allegedly found in his possession. He was subsequently arrested. He is charged with possession of a prohibited weapon, unauthorized possession of ammunition, and removal of mark on firearm. PNP supporters protest installation of Duane Valls as standard beer in Westmoreland Central. A handful of placard bearers for the People's National Party supporters took to the streets on Sunday to voice their opposition to the possibility of Duane Valls being announced as the party's standard beer for Westmoreland Central constituency. The comrade short protest, which took place outside the gates of Peter's Field High School in the parish, where a constituency conference is currently underway, was interrupted by supporters of Valls. Valls is expected to be announced as the standard bearer later. However, one party supporter from Ricketts Avenue in Savannah Lamar, South Division, Helen Hebert, argued that while she is in support of attorney at law, Dan Massapart, anyone apart from Walls is welcome. We don't want anybody who resigned coming back into Westmoreland Central. We want somebody we, who we, even if we get a donkey, we will support the donkey, she said. Walls won the seat in the by election following the death of former Member of Parliament Roger Clark, but later lost the seat to George Wright who contested on Jamaica Labour Party ticket in the 2020 general election. Wright later became an independent MP. Hibbert, who claimed that she was once a supporter of Vaz, said the people want somebody who will represent them. We want somebody who will walk with the people and hear them, stated Hibbert, who made it clear that she will not vote for Vaz if selected. Another supporter, Maxine Daly, shared similar sentiments. You can't get any help from him and we don't want people like these. So if the party chose to win Vaz and us, you know what is going to happen. We are not voting, and odd divisions in Westmoreland Central are going back to the labor right, stated Daly, in reference to the local government election, which is due in February of next year. Miller Barrett expressed surprise at the protest. She noted that she had expressed an interest in the position if Vaz had failed to increase his popularity, but said she was advised that he was successful and he would be the party's standard bearer for the candidacy. This news is a surprise to me. I had expressed an interest to run in the event that Mr. Voss has failed to carry out the three months program of work he has given to do or raise his popularity number. We were advised that he has done well and would be the candidate. I graciously accept the decision and thank my supporters for their efforts. I am currently overseas on vacation and would not approach such an action, she stated. The constituents currently have five municipal corporations divisions, three of which are controlled by the Jamaica Labour Party, and one vacant following the elevation of Wright, who was elected as MP. The divisions are Frome, Petersfield, Cornwall Mountain, Savannah Lamar North, and Savannah Lamar South. Several Caribbean Airlines flights cancelled amid pilot sick out. Caribbean Airlines announced Sunday evening that several flights were cancelled after the company received a remarkably high volume of calls from pilots who said they were unwell 
and unable to report for duty. The airline added that it is currently in negotiations with the Trinidad and Tobago Airline Pilots Association over an agreement for the 2015 to 2018 period. It said pilots called in sick approximately three hours before flight departure times. As a result, Caribbean Airlines is advising ticket holders to await contact from the company's reservation service center, which will provide updates on rescheduled flights. We want to emphasize that if your flight is cancelled, there is no need for you to head to the airport until we have contacted you with information about your new flight date and time. We appreciate your understanding and patience as we work to resolve these unexpected challenges and provide the necessary support to our affected customers, Caribbean Airlines said. Discussions ongoing to relocate St. Anne's Bay Infirmary The government is engaging in discussions to have the St. Anne's Bay Infirmary relocated due to safety concerns surrounding its location. Minister of Local Government and Community Development Desmond McKenzie made this statement while on tour of the facility on Friday. He expressed fear about a disaster at the facility if a terrible hurricane or storm should come. This as the Atlantic hurricane season began on June 1 and is to end on November 30. While noting that he is not pleased with the state of the facility, Mr. McKenzie said despite the poor location, the maintenance could have been better. He noted that while they await confirmation for land suitability for the relocation, some $50 million has been earmarked to have the facility renovated. I'm disappointed about the condition of the, the, the infirm. The maintenance is exceedingly poor. Now, this is a tall building which is close next door to the sea. So, the seawater has, you know, real has affected the, the area but despite that the maintenance could have been better um we just we have to spend the money which is going to take a, a good amount of money especially for the kitchen we're going to have to put on literally a new kitchen um we have to ensure that the, the building is sanitized because a old building and it is infested with chiches so that is one of the first our business. Uh, we're going to pay some attention to the bathroom in the male section of the infirmary. So the ministry is going to be providing $50 million at the outset. The permanent section will have direct responsibility for how that $50 million is going to be executed, working with the, the municipal corporation in executing the funds because to provide $50 million at this time, and if we do get a call within the next three months to say, yes, the lands are available, we're going to have to find another $100 million to build a new facility. So the permanent sector will have direct responsibility and control for how this expenditure is going to be done. Which urges farmers to invest in livestock production. Minister of State in the Ministry of Agriculture, Fishery and Mining, Franklin Whittle, is calling for more registered farmers to get involved in livestock production. Whittle noted that only 15% of registered Jamaican farmers are actively engaged in livestock production. The importation of live animals is duty-free, and so you cannot afford to miss this opportunity. The small remittance industry is one of the present significant opportunities for farmers, particularly our youth and female farmers. I want investors to truly capitalize on the potential of this sector, he stated. The Minister of State was addressing a training session for Sumerian farmers held on August 17 at the Parish Office for the Rural Agricultural Development Authority Rada in Maypen, Clarendon. The training initiative was sponsored by the World University Service of Canada, which noted that the Ministry remains committed to playing its part in growing the agricultural sector in Jamaica and will continue to work towards food security. He further informed that the Ministry is committed to providing incentives geared at small remittent farmers producing offspring with superior genetics, thus improving the local stock and decreasing the country's dependency on imports. Meanwhile, the State Minister commended WUSC Caribbean for contributing to the development of the small remittent industry. He said training is being provided in folder production which will equip all farmers with the skills needed to produce feed for their livestock, will be assisting with infrastructure and equipment as well. 
Focus is also being placed on addressing internal and external parasite management, which is critical to ensuring that farmers can maximize productivity in the industry. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell.